hello students so today we are going to discuss the class 12th physics chapter 7 alternating current topic is ac through pure capacitive circuit now before this let me tell you that in the previous class we all have discussed about the ac through a pure resistive circuit so now let's discuss about the ac through a pure capacitive circuit now what is a capacitive circuit a capacitive circuit is a circuit in which only a capacitor is connected no other device is connected through it now as we can see the circuit diagram here a capacitor is there and a capacitor is connected with the help of a connecting wire to a AC source and AC source is connected to it that means the current flowing through the capacitor is your alternating current and what is the equation of alternating EMF the equation of alternating EMF is E equals to E naught sine omega t so the EMF across the pure capacitive circuit is E equals to E naught sine omega t second point what is omega t omega t is the phase where omega is the angular frequency and t is the time that at that particular instantaneous time t the phase of that voltage is your omega so overall sin omega t is the phase coming to the current across the pure capacitive circuit now the current across the pure capacitive circuit is given by the equation i equals to i naught sin omega t plus pi by 2 now we are going to derive this equation i will explain you this equation that is how does the sin omega t plus pi by 2 comes as it is clearly visible to you that in current equation the current is leading the emf by a phase angle of pi by 2 in emf equation it is e naught sin omega t but in current equation it is i naught sin omega t plus pi by 2 that means it is leading the voltage with a phase angle of pi by 2 now let me tell you here e equals to e naught sin omega t as it is known to you e naught is the peak value of the voltage whereas e is the instantaneous volt value of the voltage similarly in current i naught is the peak value of the current whereas i is the instantaneous value of the current now it is written here in pure capacitive circuit the voltage across the capacitor is directly proportional to the charge okay now when the capacitor is connected to the ac source it limits or regulates the current but doesn't completely prevent the flow of charge now how does it come we will explain in the next slide so let's come to the derivation of the current equation let the alternating voltage applied to the circuit is given by the equation e equals to e naught sine omega t let it be equation one now the charge of the capacitor at any instant of time is given by q equals to cv we have already read in our ch previous chapter now here instead of v we are writing here e that is the voltage here we are representing it that is your emf e so q is equals to c e let it be equation one coming to the next one next slide now the current flowing through this circuit is given by the equation i equals to dq upon dt let it be equation number three now putting the value of q from equation 2 that is we have written q equals to c e now we are going to put that value in equation 3 so i will be will be d c e upon dt let it be equation 4 now what is the value of emf in a, the emf in a capacitive circuit can be represented or the alternating emf can be represented as your e equals to e naught sin omega t so that's why it is written here now putting the value of e 
from equation 1 in equation 4 we will get i equals to d upon dt of c e naught sin omega t now as we know when we are fixing or placing a capacitor in a circuit the capacitor of the cap that is the capacitance of the capacitor is fixed one that it has a constant value when we are making the capacitor so that means in this equation the c is a constant factor similarly the e naught that is the peak value of current that is also a constant factor so we are taking out of the differentiation and we are placing it c e naught and we are differentiating sin omega t as the current the alternating current it is a sin function and it is changing its what that it is changing with the phase of omega t that at particular instant t we are getting another a different value so that's the reason we are differentiating sin omega t so when we are differentiating we can write i equals to c e naught the differentiation of sin omega t can be written as your cos omega t into omega so we are taking the omega out so it becomes e naught omega c cos omega t now here instead of e naught it is written here v naught so that is the same thing now e naught omega c can be written as e naught upon 1 by omega c okay you people already know that in mathematics these are the simple things and cos omega t can be represented as your sin omega t plus pi by 2 as we know that cos theta equal to sin 90 degree plus theta which can be written as your sin theta plus 90 degree so it is your current i can be now written as e naught upon 1 omega c sin omega t plus pi by 2 this is our equation number 5 this is the final equation of our current in a purely capacitive circuit now when the current will be maximum as we see the current depends on the factor sin omega t plus pi by 2 how if sin omega t plus pi by 2 will become 1 in that case the i will be your maximum value because the maximum value of sine is 1 and it can be written as your i naught equals to e naught upon 1 by omega c so now we are placing this e naught upon 1 by omega c as your i naught and writing it again the equation 5 so equation 5 finally becomes i equals to i naught sine omega t plus pi by 2 and here it comes the final equation of current for a purely capacitive circuit. Now, what is the phase difference? As I already told you, the, in EMF the equation is E naught sin omega t, whereas in current it is I naught sin omega t plus pi by 2. Therefore, the current I leads EMF by a phase difference of pi by 2, that is 90 degree. It can be written in a reverse manner. That is EMF lags behind current by a phase difference of pi by 2. It is very simple. Okay. A lead B or B lag A. The same thing is there. Now what is the opposition? Opposition means which opposes the flow of current. As we know that in Ohm's law V equals to IR. Here R is the opposition what we given the name resistance. Similarly V upon I equals to R that is. In the same way here E naught upon I naught can be written as from equation 5. From equation 5 you see. No before that below that equation 5 you just see I naught equals to E naught upon 1 by omega C. That means I naught upon E naught can be written as what 1 by 1 upon omega C. From this equation we are getting that is your E naught upon I naught can be written as your 1 upon omega C. And we are giving it the name Xc that is capacitive reactance. It is doing the work of a resistance. Just the resistance opposes the flow of current. Similarly in a capacitive uh, that is a circuit. The capacitive reactance opposes the flow of current. It, do, it does the work of a resistance. So capacitive reactance is the, what is the statement or definition of it. 
the opposition offered by the capacitor to the flow of ac through it it measures the effective resistance offered by the capacitor okay so xc is equals to 1 upon omega c and if we are placing the value of omega that is angular frequency we can write it in terms of a normal frequency that is 2 pi f so xc can be also written as 1 upon 2 pi fc now for steady current now see the behavior of this capacitive reactance okay now for steady current in case of a dc it is a steady direct current here the current flows in a straight line there is no alteration of the current flows so here there is omega is equals to 0 now since omega equals to 0 xc is equals to as 1 by omega c this value will be your fault if omega is 0 1 by omega c will be obviously very large xc is very large that is infinity so i equals to e naught upon xc is low therefore current becomes 0 so no current passes through it okay so dc current do not passes through it or we can say it blocks a capacitor blocks the direct current now coming to the next slide for ac now ac in case of ac it is an alternating current where omega is very high so there then xc is very low now if the capacitive reactance is the opposition is very low then obviously the current will be very high so therefore alternating current is allowed to pass but direct current is blocked okay this is comes this comes as your short question and this is a very important statement you must remember now coming to the wave diagram as you see if the emf is starting from zero its peak goes at 90 degree then it comes zero at 180 degree and likewise but the current leads it by 90 degree that is by pi by 2 so the current is going ahead of emf so when the emf is at zero at that time the current is already in its peak position and when the emf is coming to 90 degree then the current is reaching to its lowest position okay that is the zero condition so you can see in the wake diagram the current is leading or going ahead of the emf now coming to your phasor diagram that is how can we represent the phasor of the emf and i as you see e naught is with respect to the time it is at a phase angle of omega t and i naught is again 90 degree ahead of e naught so it is given with the what second quadrant it has been shown i naught that is 90 degree is it clear the phase diagram is also a very important student you have to be remember you remember these diagrams okay so this is all about the capacitor circuit and the all the properties of the alternating emf current wave diagram phasor diagram opposition offered to the current in a capacitive circuit okay so this much students i hope you understand these things thank you